Why, hello there, and welcome back to the GSL English Podcast. My name is Gideon, and in this week's episode, we are just going to have a general natter together. Now, we're going to talk about a few different random things. So, if you're in a position where you can, please grab a cup of tea, grab a cup of coffee, sit back and relax. I know many of you listen to these podcasts whilst working, driving to work, cooking, cleaning. Even someone said you listen to this while working out, which I find remarkable. I know that listening to the sound of my own voice would not give me the enthusiasm I need to keep on exercising. But if that does it for you, then that's fantastic. But whatever you're doing, please let me assist you along the way and just enjoy and listen along as I have a chat about everything and nothing. And that's basically what we're going to talk about today. I've got a rough idea of where I want this podcast to go. Don't worry, I have prepared a little bit. I know the kind of things I want to talk about, but every now and then I do really enjoy these types of episodes where it's not scripted, perhaps like my other YouTube lessons, which always have a purpose and an intention, whether that is to help you with a certain area of learning the English language, whether it is learning some new vocabulary or practicing speaking. Um, and that's the main reason that I put together those YouTube lessons. But also, I like to do this podcast because it presents the English language to you in a much more natural way. You know, it's not all scripted. It's not all perfect. <laughs> I don't remove the bits where I make myself sound a little bit stupid. I keep them all in just so you can practice listening in a nice and natural way to me, a random British guy expressing his opinions. So, yeah, I hope you enjoy these style as much as I do. I know recently we've had a few guests join us on the podcast, which has been really lovely. I thoroughly enjoy that. Last week, we, of course, had Gemma from English with Gemma join us and we had a great discussion. So I hope you enjoyed that. And as a little um, just note here, I'm having issues with my Spotify at the moment. I don't know what has happened, but I can't seem to access my profile to upload the podcasts onto there, which I know creates a little bit of a paradox because I'm creating this apology for those that listen on Spotify. But at the moment of recording, you cannot even listen to this. So this apology will get to you in the future once I'm back on Spotify and the problem is rectified. So I guess when you are listening to this, I'm sorry. I'm just so sorry I've not been here for a while on Spotify. As I said, this is natural and I, I realised in my head how confusing that sounded. But basically, I'm sorry for you Spotify listeners. Please accept my apology for when I am allowed back on Spotify. Now you know why I've not been there. It wasn't my choice. I promise you, Spotify just logged me out. And now I can't log back in, but I will fix it by hook or by crook. I will get back on Spotify. But yeah, how are you all doing? How's your week been? I hope you've had a good week wherever you are in the world, wherever you're listening from. That's one thing that always amazes me. Um, I love hearing from all of you and just listening from the different and um, just hearing about the different locations that you listen to me or my guests, or the podcast, or watch my videos. It makes me very happy. So yeah, wherever you are listening from in the world, I hope you are doing well. Now, the weather here in England today is atrocious. It's awful. It's quite frankly horrible. Now, my office where I record these podcasts is outside. Well, no, it's not. I don't mean my office is outside. It is inside as you can see if you're watching on YouTube. But I have to step outside probably 12 steps to get to my office. And this morning, this is no lie, it was raining so much, it was so grey and gloomy, I stood by my back kitchen door with a cup of coffee, building myself up to make that walk of 10 steps to my office. It was that horrible with 
you know, chucking it down with rain. I just didn't want to do it. So I had to psych myself up to go for that walk, that 12 step walk to my office. Now I'm here. I've had private lessons this morning. I've recorded some more YouTube videos. I'm now recording the podcast and I refuse to make the walk back unless I really have to and I don't have to do it again. So I've kind of locked myself in the office today. I've hunkered down. That's how bad the weather is. And it got me thinking, I'm desperate for some sun. I just want some sun, some lasting sun, you know, to be able to go outside just in a T-shirt, shorts, flip flops or sandals, you know, and just enjoy that vitamin D. I need it. So this week I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it for my wife and I. I'm going to book just a little weekend away. I don't know, maybe not a weekend, maybe four or five nights. We'll go to Spain or Tenerife or Greece, countries like that, that a lot of Brits like to go to. It's hot. Or it's warmer than here. And you get some good deals, which I thought would be the case. Now, upon examination and upon looking for a last minute holiday deal, which is something we often do, you know, last minute deals. I want to go away in two weeks time, throw a deal at me and I'll book it. I couldn't find anything at a reasonable price. And it got me thinking, has the last minute deal ship sailed? Do we no longer get last minute deals? Because I remember years back, you know, if we wanted to just get a, a quick few nights away somewhere, we just look on a certain website, you get a package deal, which will be a, a flight and accommodation, and you just fly away. And it would be a reasonable price. And you think, oh, that was a great deal. It doesn't matter if the hotel is brilliant or not. I got a good deal, so I don't care. I don't know whether I was just looking in the wrong places, but it doesn't seem to me that those reasonable last minute deals exist. I could not find anything that was anywhere near considered reasonable. I know when I was younger, my parents used to book holidays on what is called teletext. Now, I'm, tr I'm trying to think about what that actually was. But when I was younger, we had or well, growing up at first, we had three channels three TV channels, okay, on our, so channel one, channel two, channel three. I remember the day we got channel four and it was like, oh yeah, we've got four TV channels, check us out in my little village in England, you know, check us out, we've got four TV channels now, we're living the high life. Um, yeah, I remember that moment and then they brought out channel five, which we never got, we never got channel five, so that was, that excitement of having four channels was very short lived. But on terrestrial TV, which is what that was on our four channels, there was a button you could press and it came up with this really old school style of text on the screen. And this was in the 90s. And it would come up with news, different information. I think what was going to be on the TV, but I might be wrong there because I was only young at this time. But you could book holidays on teletext. So it would generally be black and white or black and another colour. So there would be no other information. It's not like scrolling through the internet day today where you have thousands of pictures, reviews and videos. No, it wasn't like that at all. It would say Spain, this hotel, £200 per person. Do you want to book it? And you press the button, you'd phone them up and you'd book it. And you'd kind of go blind you know, you would go in, not you would go blind. I mean, but you would go into it blind. So you'd book it just hoping that it was OK. And I remember a lot of my family holidays were based around that process. Oh, my mum, my dad was called Richard. So I'm going, oh, Rich, there's a great deal on Teletext. Should we book it? Yeah, all right, let's go. And that was it. And we would get those last minute deals and we would get that much needed vitamin D. Um, so yeah, it got me thinking, are the days of last minute deals gone? I don't know. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong places. Maybe it's just an English thing. I don't know. Is it something where you are? Let me know. But bring back the last minute deals. They make me happy. I want to go on holiday. I want some sun. I want to just lie on a sunbed, read a book, dip my toes in some water and then carry on and just 
repeat that basic process for a few days. But isn't it true that we we all need an escape, don't we, of some sort? And I think even within our within the parameters of our daily life or week, we need an escape. And I don't mean to run away and escape permanently. I think every human needs something which separates their life from the norm. It takes them away from normality because I'm sure you would agree life is more busy right now than ever. I don't know about you, but life just seems to be so busy all the time. There's always something to do, isn't there? There's always something to think about, whether that's family, financial, I don't know, health, or just just getting by from day to day. There's always something to think about. Now, I do believe that it's an essential thing that we all have an escape. Something which we can do just every week, whether it's for an hour or a couple of hours, that just takes us away from normality. Even something that if you're learning English at the moment, something that takes your mind off of that. Do you know what I mean? Just something which just separates your mind from normal life. And for some, that's reading. You know, cuddling up on the sofa, on your own, wrapped up with a book and a hot chocolate escape. For others, it's maybe watching a film, going for a walk, going for a drive. So I thought I would tell you about my escape. The thing that I like to do that really takes my mind off everything. Because as much as I love doing YouTube, I love preparing these lessons, I love podcasts. Of course, I'm also a private teacher. So I offer private lessons online over Zoom. If you are interested, let me know in the comments. I do that as well as the GSL English Club on Patreon, where I post lessons. Time, you know, I don't have a lot of time. I'm always busy, just like everybody. You know, I'm not complaining. Life is busy. It's part of being an adult, unfortunately. But we've all got to have an escape. And my escape is this thing here. Now, if you're listening, me pointing to this, what I'm pointing at in the video doesn't really help you. If you are watching, you can see now any guesses as to what I like to do. Now, you're either going to really judge me for this thinking, Gideon, you are such a nerd. Why do you do that? Or you're going to think, no, I get it for a variety of reasons. Now, what I am pointing to, dear listeners, is oh, it's really difficult to point at something when you're watching it back. Oh, wow. Oh, I can't do it. OK, I'm going to move my hand. So I'm pointing at a chair. Now, this is not just a chair. This is a car racing chair. Ooh. Now, what do you think I do? So my little escape, the thing that I like to do is called sim racing, which is simulation racing. For me, this is a time where my mind just switches off. I don't know if you've seen those videos recently going around on social media where there's just a lot of noise going on and then someone does a certain thing and it's just calm, it's quiet. So maybe there's a lot of noise going on in our heads. You know that noise that you just get from daily life, just blah, in your head all the time. Everyone has that one activity where that noise just stops. Maybe it's exercising. I know for some it's cooking, things like that. Well, for me, this chair is it. And simulation racing. I really hope you find this as interesting as I do. Otherwise... Yeah, I understand if you switch off listening now. But simulation racing is basically where you are connected to a PC or a console, a games console, whether that be an Xbox or a PlayStation, and you race cars. You participate in a race. Now, attached to this wheel is a, attached to this um, seat is a wheel and pedals. So that is my thing. I like to do race weekends where I qualify I set up the car I you know I do the races sometimes my wife likes to sit on the sofa and watch me and it's just that real escape and I think everybody needs that for me that is my time where I don't think about responsibilities that I have I don't think about work I just think about that and okay it might be a bit sad I might be a bit of a loser but I really enjoy it and actually, from my passion of cars and motorsport, my wife has also developed a love of cars 
and motor racing with me. So for us, it's kind of been a fantastic scenario for me because this love of cars actually now for both of us is our escape. And there's one thing we like to do, which is to go and watch the British Touring Car Championship. Now, we have a, a racing championship in England, which is basically just everyday cars that are made into race cars and you watch them race. Now, the reason I bring this up is that for my wife and I, OK, don't have a lot of time, but we actually view it as a weekend away. So there's a track near my house called Brands Hatch and we go there. And what we do is we go there for two days while racing is on. And you might think, oh, that's so boring. But hear me out. We take two camping chairs. It's always a good time of the year. So the sun's off and out. We take drinks. We take snacks. We just enjoy it. And what we do is we kind of pitch up for two days and just with our drinks, with our chairs, in the sun, with some food, we just watch cars flying around the track. The atmosphere is really good. And it's a weekend away very close to our home. It's an escape. I wonder if you've got things like that, which is just your little things in life, which are your escape. And it's true, isn't it? We've all got to have them. And actually, this escape has led us both on to love Formula One. If there's any Formula One fans that watch this podcast, please let me know in the comments. Now, I know Formula One at the moment is dominated by one name and one name only. That is Max Verstappen, incredible driver, incredible car, but come on, we need something to mix it up a little bit, don't we? We need someone just to, I don't know, we need something just to make it a little bit more interesting. But then again, Formula One, as a family now, is our escape. On a Sunday, we get some snacks, we watch the race together, generally fall asleep for part of the race because the noise is quite therapeutic. If something is therapeutic, it's relaxing. It's almost like therapy. And we just enjoy it. So I don't know what your escape is, but if you haven't got one, I was trying to think, you know, try and find one. You know what I mean? Try and find just something which takes your mind off of normality, it takes you away from everyday life. Because we, we live this life. We're surrounded by it all the time. And as good as that might be, it's nice to have something, isn't it, which is just not connected with that. I think it's one of the reasons that I love Star Wars. Now, many of you, or if you've been watching me for a while, will know that I'm a big Star Wars fan. Star Wars is a big part of my family, in fact. But I think one of the reasons that I love it so much is because it's it's an escape from normality. You know, you're going to another galaxy far, far away. You're There's different species, different, just a, a different way of living. And when you watch those films, you are transported to that place. And it is that escape from reality. It's that escape from normality. And switching off is important, isn't it? As well as having a break now and then, just having those little things that help us just to switch off. And, and this is quite an interesting approach that we can take to studying. Now, recently, I've been preparing something or working with someone for a long time, and I've had to to work on this particular thing for a few hours at a time. And I I learned something about myself actually from doing this, that my approach to study or to working on this, I couldn't just go for two, three hours straight working. I wasn't as productive as I could have been. So what I started doing and someone recommended to me is 30 minutes on, 10 minutes off. And I thought, Perhaps this is a way that you could approach or we could approach learning a language or learning English, because, of course, we want to immerse ourselves within the English language. We want to passively learn as much as we can. That is through listening, reading and writing. But I do believe that sitting down, taking time to sit down and study is also of great importance. But a great approach that I've learned is time on, time off. So time where your brain is completely engaged in learning, time where you are completely engrossed in what you are studying and then time doing something completely different. And I think actually this is a process that is proven to aid memory and to help you to remember what you are studying. So let's imagine that you set aside 45 minutes. Well, what you could do is 15 minutes on, a few minutes off, five minutes off, 
15 minutes on again, five minutes off, and then an extra five minutes. But doing that, it's almost like shocking your system. And it's more just the principle behind it. And that might be something that you could try. If you find it difficult to sit down and study for a long period of time, well, why don't you sit down for 10 minutes, then switch off from that for five minutes. Go read a book, make a coffee, go for a walk, whatever it is, and then come back to it. And I find that when I come back to it, my mind is like refreshed. It's like saying, thank you. Okay. And then the thoughts come flowing again, and I'm able to study with a much clearer head. So that might be just a little approach that you could take to um, to learning a language or learning English is you know, just sitting down for an hour studying might not work, but perhaps you can take that on and off approach, switch off from now and then. But also, I think at the moment there's this big pressure. I noticed with a few of my students just to just constantly keep on studying, keep on blah, blah, blah. And it is, becomes quite a stressful thing. But it's so important that we just relax. You know, as long as we put the time in and the effort, we're going to learn English. We're going to improve. But don't take yourself so seriously when it comes to study. You know, find a way of learning that is consistent. Find a way of learning that you enjoy, that you can keep up. And don't compare yourself to everybody else. Just do that. If it's working for yourself, you know, if it's working for you, just do that. Because I think we do live in a world now where everything is about comparisons, isn't it? For example, I like sitting down, playing video games, basically. I call it sim racing, simulation racing, but I like to sit down and play video games. And there's a lot of perhaps talk online or through different things which is no you can't do that you must be working 24 hours a day that's the only way you can do it and be successful no 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 there's nothing wrong with just taking some time to be a human to relax to unwind you know to go to your job come home and just i don't know read a book play some games put a film on i think sometimes we've got into this kind of social media bubble that you've got to be working 24 hours a day seven days a week if you're not you're not working hard enough it's important that we also just enjoy life isn't it and i think sometimes that approach can come across within the english language that you know you've got to be studying all the time you've got to be putting the effort in which is true you know we've got to be putting effort in the more we put in the more we get out but you know just relax. There's a word I like in um, Spanish, tranquilo, which is just calm down. Just chill out and just relax. Yeah, there's my two cents on that. You know, we've got to have our escapes just from normality. Mine is simulation racing and motorsport. I would love it if you let me know in the comments. You know, what is your escape? What is something that you you like to do just to get away from normality? Maybe it's cooking. I don't know, whatever it is, just let me know in the comments. And I would um, I would really love to hear your opinions on that. What is it that kind of helps you to, to switch your mind off? But yeah, very good. As I say, this podcast is more of just a ramble, just a natter. I like to do these every now and then just to express my thoughts. Hopefully you enjoy listening to me go on about different things and expressing my opinions but one thing i just cannot wait for as we kind of spoke about the intro of this podcast is summer now i i don't hate the cold weather i don't hate it in fact i quite like it you know putting a jumper on putting a hoodie on watching a movie with a blanket i don't mind that i quite like it but i've had enough of it now i've done enough of it this year i don't know if you can hear now but the wind is galing outside I'm just done with it. I just want some sun. So, yeah, I'm really hoping that summer starts to come round. You know, spring is slowly getting here. The bluebells are coming out in the garden. The daffodils are flowering. But we're ready for spring. And I talk for England in general when I say that to the weather. We're ready now. So if you can bring summer, I think it would make many of us very, very happy and of course when summer comes around that also brings in the pub garden now if you visited england in summer one thing that you will know that we love is a good pub garden of course we do love a pub but there's something special about on a saturday afternoon 
when the sun's out, going to the pub with your friends and family. There's something quintessentially British about that because you kind of go to the pub there's kids running around the sun's out everybody's on their picnic tables having their pint of beer their glass of wine a cup of tea i'm having a burger a fish and chips the atmosphere is just so nice and refreshing and everyone kind of has their favorite pubs that they go to like i know in my family we've got about three pubs that we love to go to one is called the leather bottle The second is called The Cricketers and the third is called The King's Arms. Very popular name of a pub in England, The King's Arms. And these are the ones we generally go to. And they fall under three criteria. The King's Arms is very local. So if we just want to, particularly in summer, pop to a pub with a good garden, five minutes away, it's The King's Arms. The Cricketers is if we want a pint or a drink and some good food, we go to The Cricketers. And the third one, which I've completely just forgotten the name of. Oh my goodness, my mind has just gone completely blank. Oh, the leather bottle. That shows how much I love this pub. Yeah, the leather bottle. That's kind of our pub if we fancy getting out of our little village a little bit. You know what I mean? Just going for a little drive in the sun and it's got a nice garden about 30 to 40 minutes away. And I've noticed this is a thing in England. You generally have your different criteria of pub and depending on the situation, the mood, or however you're feeling, that dictates which pub you're going to go to. And we're getting to that time of year where it's summer and you've got a pub garden. And there's one that we love to go to. It's the King's Arms. And you, you sit outside on the terrace and there's just a little stream. And people are swimming in the stream or they're sup boarding, which is where you stand up on a surfboard and paddle. I tried it once. I was absolutely terrible at it. But the atmosphere is just really nice. And everybody seems to be in such a good mood. So, yeah, I'm ready for that. I'm ready for summer. But there you go. There's my opinions on a few different things. Just a general natter about anything. If you did enjoy this episode of the podcast, if you do enjoy hearing me natter on or controversially if you don't enjoy me enjoy hearing me natter on and you'd rather me just have guests please let me know either way in the comments or if you've ever got any questions you would like me to answer if there's anything in particular you would like me to talk about then please you know let me know i'm here for you i only want to create content that you are going to enjoy so you can let me know in the comments on youtube or if you are listening you can send me an email gsl English one at gmail.com. GSL English one at gmail.com. And if you do want to learn English with me every day, you can join the GSL English Club on Patreon. And there I post lessons nearly every day of the week, just short, bite sized lessons that will present to you new vocabulary uh, about British culture, British life listening exercises and it just gives you something to daily think about and listen to in English because one of the most difficult things is even if we want to learn English every day sometimes we get to it and we think well I don't know what to study I don't know what to look at well that's the purpose of the club just to give you something to think about so something to take in in the English language without having to think too much there's a free trial available do that for seven days and after that it's only three pounds for the whole month (laughs) okay so yeah if you want to join that please start your free trial the link is in the top comment or in the bio probably in the bio but thank you so much for joining me today guys i do appreciate your support i hope you enjoy these podcasts in a much more natural way and remember just be consistent with learning the language and enjoy it but i will see you all very soon and yeah thank you for watching Have a good one, guys.